Okay. And Matt, do you want to do the script or do you want me to do it? Oh yeah, I'm happy to. Yeah. You can go right ahead. Okay. Well, um, pursuant, hang on, let me just pull it up. Um, yeah, pursuant to chapter 20 of the acts of 2021, this meeting is being conducted via remote, uh, means members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via zoom. No in-person meeting attendance will be permitted, uh, but every effort is being made to ensure the public has adequate access to the proceedings in real time. Uh, in the event that we're unable to do so, the meeting may be viewed on the town's YouTube channel after the fact. Thanks. Do you want Can we do the roll call? Yep. I think we've heard everybody, actually. And everybody yeah, can we should me. do it officially, so. Okay. You can hear Cody. you, Matt. You can hear me. Eleanor, you good? Yes. Sylvie? Yep. And Cody. Yeah. Thank you. Great. And then just heard from Rachel. Looks like she's trying to join. Uh, she's still having trouble. Okay. All right. So I think um, to jump a little bit ahead of the... Um, agenda. Uh, apologies that, again, I, I don't know if everybody got my email today, but I did not follow through um, with sending out the the review sheets um, to be able to kind of score um, what was in the panel book. And we also did not get the pages numbered. Um, it's just there, there are 103 grant applications and it just, you know, it's a, a chunk of time to do that. And by the time I got sick earlier this week, I just... <laughs> Couldn't couldn't put the time together um, to take care of all of that. So, apologies, and I will I will try to address that um, before we meet next. Okay. So, I guess Matt, do you want to move to? I don't think we I don't think we get approved the minutes because I don't think we had minutes, did we? No, we haven't had minutes in a bit, which is okay. which is which dovetails. We'll come into back that. to that in just a sec, right? Um, so we have the the agenda with the deliberation for the twenty twenty four grants. Um, should perhaps we should we should do that uh, after the the uh, officers discussion. because then we might have a secretary to take notes. Do you want to swap that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, and Rachel, so glad you're able to, to join us. Um, Rachel, can you hear us? You're on mute. We, we I can do. hear you. I can hear you, but can you Excellent. hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Perfect. Great. Okay. If thanks. I drop, I'll, I'll I'll join back in. Okay, thanks. Okay, sorry about All that. Right. You have quorum though, right? Already, we do. We have a quorum. Right. We're recording. So just since you maybe can't see, you know, it's uh, Matt, Eleanor, Sylvie, Cody, myself, and you. Right. Great. Hello, Excellent. everyone. Hi, Rachel. Okay, so um, we have two officer positions open. Um, we have our treasurer position that's been open um that that I stepped into kind of to stabilize things Robin was um our treasurer and then she uh had some illness and it was a pretty heavy lift as far as switching between the two different um granting models from reimbursement to direct granting and um so I started off by helping her and then she's rotated off so I've kind of had had that responsibility um, so that position is open along with secretary. Um, so Rachel and I have talked and um, Rachel, you let me know that you might be interested in picking up the the treasurer position, which would be wonderful. And it's it's not the kind of thing where we flip a switch and I kind of go hands off. Okay. You're treasurer. Cause there, there really is some, like Matt was saying to you, Eleanor, there's a lot of responsibility with it and, and detail. We really have improved it a great deal. We're going to make some changes um, further this year um, to 
uh, digitally sign some documents that's really going to reduce um, the workload there. Um, but that's something that I, I would gladly partner with you or whomever um, to uh, transition that um, kind of as a, as a way that we're, you know, handing off and training um, as well. So, uh, and then the secretary position, really it comes down to uh, just, we need someone officially who's uh, the person of record who will come to the meetings and take notes. Now, at any given moment, it's really not possible, you know, for any one of us to confirm that we're going to be at every single meeting. Leah um, was our treasurer last year, and uh, she's rotated off, and her position is open for a council member because she is um, away at college. But um, there are a couple of ways to to do this. As far as if you're not attending, something comes up, uh, then we the rest of us try to generally, you know keep some basic notes, but also because these are all recorded, the notes can be done from the from the recording after the fact is another option. And the notes are not incredibly detailed. Um, it, it tends to, to just really come down to some, some bullet points um, of, of key things. And something came up just recently where I actually did have to go back through the minutes um, and find out what we said when and what was the dollar value that we voted on. So the key things as a secretary, um, are are noting you know which which motions you know who was here who made the motion and um that it passed and what the final decision was things like that as well as keeping a, a running list of of all of the major themes and topics that we get to but it's not like a transcription does anyone have any any questions about either of those yes. i was just gonna say I, I would be happy to try doing the secretary position um to volunteer myself for that. Thank you. Thank you very much. And and Rachel, are you um, still willing to consider treasurer? You might be muted. Yes, yes, I would. Yeah, I think I put my hand up to say, well, you know, I can help out with that, step in if, if um, you know, if that would be useful, so. That'd be wonderful, and I, I think especially as we're going to put, you know, kind of more um, digital sign-offs in place that uh, would be great to start collaborating on that as just possible. Now, here's the thing. We can't just have a discussion about, about it and say it's done. Um, so uh, we, we will officially need to vote on it, but I do want to open the floor to everyone for discussion, questions, any thoughts or comments. Um, Matt? Yeah, I just wanted to say to Eleanor that what we usually do is create the agenda in a Google Doc. And then what I would do is I'd share it over into a, a different folder or make I'm sorry, make a copy of it into a different folder. And literally the, you know, the secretary role just types notes in underneath the items. Um, and as Julianne said, I mean, the at a bare minimum, the, the minimum expectation is just that we if we have any action items like mm -hmm. votes or or substantive decisions that get recorded. You know, so I mean, because I think some folks, it's it's nice to have a lengthy narrative record, but um, that's not the expectation. And and really, it's sort of as Julianne said, they're recorded. So anybody who really wants the nuance would probably go back and watch anyway. And and actually, from an accountability point of view, um, it's probably safer to keep it pretty top level as far as right. if somebody wants to go through the whole thing. It is recorded, but. You know, I know if I was doing something very detailed, I'd probably start putting in, you know, things I was thinking, you know, so it's it's better to just keep it super clean. Right. Okay. Yeah. Makes total sense. And yeah, nice to know that there's like an agenda to work off of. I'll share it to you right now. Are you, are you at your... Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yes. C Cody, are you raising your hand or... No. Okay. Thanks. And Rachel, do you um, have anything you want to say or ask about treasurer? Oh, I was just wondering for either of these positions, or for both of these positions, is there a, uh, presumably there needs to be a vote. Does there need to be a nomination recorded or something? Or is it just Eleanor and I have self-nominated? How does that work? I don't know. We're we're okay to do a, a self-nomination volunteer and then just a vote for the, I think, g given that we don't have a competitive Right, yeah. you know, better race. 
Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I nominate Rachel and Eleanor to take on. And then yeah. look. And I second. Yeah, I, I mean, we don't mean, mean to make light of it. This is really appreciated. And, and you know, I found in my life that I've served on a bunch of committees in different capacities. And until you're an officer, it really, and it's not about being in charge. It's really about just taking on some of that ownership. Um, and, you know, going from a member to an officer is a big step in, in the secretary role as well. I mean, it's all, it's all, it's all very, very important to keep things moving. So thank you both very, very much. And I'm, it's my honor, my <laughs> honor to nominate you both. Thanks, I seconded it. <laughs> so I guess we need to take a, a uh, roll call vote. I'll let you run with that, Matt. <laughs> Julian. Uh, I, I vote yes for Eleanor as secretary and yes for Rachel as treasurer. Cody. Yes, for both. Sylvie. Sylvie, we can't hear you. Oh, sorry. I was <laughs> on mute. I vote yes for both. Thank you. Uh, Rachel? Sure. Can I vote for myself? I mean, I'm you definitely sure voting can. yes for, for Eleanor. Thanks, Eleanor. Um, and Eleanor. Yes, for Rachel. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> and, and I am an I for them both as for you both as well. Excellent. Thank you both. Looking forward to working with you even more. Is there an agenda for today in the folder, Matt? There is, but I'm going to share that directly to you so you don't have to okay. be looking for it. It's it's. Pretty brief anyway. So the remaining uh, agenda items are to start on our review and del deliberation of uh, the 2024 grants. And then the the other two are new business, not reasonably anticipated 48 hours in advance and adjournment. So it's, we're pretty much um, through most, most of what we, ju we just need to get into um, going through the grants. Does anybody have any questions? Um, to start with, as far as the the, the grants that you um, reviewed, just or just general questions, we don't need to do anything specific. Yet. I was wondering if there's a place that I can refer to the rules. Um, yeah, it's on the town website. It's also um, on the on the MCC website for us. But if you go to AmherstMA.gov. And you go to the alphabetic listings of the committees and you go, go to the cultural council. I'm not looking at it, but somewhere around there, it should have our guidelines. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, I guess as, as far as a general thing as well, I uh, thank you, Rachel, so much for putting the report together um, about the surveys. I don't think there was anything that was like really kind of huge or different from what we reviewed in the last meeting. Um, unless I missed something, Rachel, is there anything you want to call out about that? You mean in terms of the survey results? Yeah, I think most of the content was pretty much there and discussed in general at the last meeting. Or did you see anything um, to note that we didn't discuss? Um, no, I think just generally speaking, I did pull the survey. I closed it over the weekend on whatever deadline we had said. I think it was the 22nd. And um, so I, I closed the survey and we had 72 responses all together. And then the other thing I was just going to say is that the way I sorted the data hopefully will help everyone to like kind of assess the grants. But, you know, if there's if anyone wants to sort it another way. Mm -hmm. and you have the time and interest to do that, I'm happy to forward whatever information you need. But um, yeah, so there's nothing really. And and I think questions one and two will, mm -hmm. will probably be most relevant to um, our initial review of the, of the applications. Mm -hmm. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. So can I just put in one, that, that same note that I made um, earlier, Julian, which is, we, you know, we don't need to come to a final decision on programmatic stuff in terms of any potential mm -hmm. local council activity. But as we get into the grant review cycle, we should pick a point to decide how much we're going to set aside, if any, for local mm -hmm. activities. Um, mm -hmm. 
that's you know and, and that really doesn't have to happen until we're at least you know yeah it, once we're like three quarters of the way through the full hundred grants mm -hmm. we need a solid decision so we can start playing with numbers but yeah until I, then it can be you know it doesn't have to be rushed which i know i've said that before but yeah just want to be thinking as as you know i've been in contact with Jay Wong over at the MCC as far as what best practice is um, with uh, the local funds that we've had. And, and uh, one of the things that's really interesting that we found when we went from the reimbursement model to direct granting is we used to end up with a pretty nice pool of interest that was seen as if we'd raised it locally um, because it didn't come from the MCC and we're able to, to have that and use that differently. And we've been relying on it for years, frankly, for a lot, whatever admin costs we'd had. Um, but with a direct granting model, now we're functioning more as a pass through the funds come in, they go out into the grantees hands as soon as possible. So what was um, a source of funds for us to have a little bit of a, a cushion, um, because, you know, we're working differently, it's not there the same way. So um, we're working with the MCC to make sure that we are <laughs> retaining the right amount of funds to be stable because, but ideally, you know, we'd like to, to really continue to put everything into grantees hands. And yet we do have some fiscal responsibility uh, to be able to act as the entity that we are should, should things come up. Um, and it, one would say, oh, what's going to come up? I don't know. We just went through COVID and it's, you know, everything changed. So I, I'm at this point willing to understand that I just don't know what will come up. So I definitely um, want to work with everyone to make sure we're doing the right thing. Well, let me just pause. So that is a good context for folks who are, especially Rachel, as she gets into it. But but really what what we need to know in the deliberations is the bottom line amount that we have available for granting. And mm -hmm. That's a number that, as Julianne just said, we held back um, five percent for administrative costs out of out of our allocation and out of money that was remaining from last year. So our bottom line number. It's going to take me a second to pull it up. Well, I I would say whatever our bottom line number, since I'm back and forth um, with Jay Wong, and then I'll circle back to Holly as well. It may it may change. You know, I know what I've put in the report. Um, but I'm I'm still open to amending depending on what they advise. I, well, okay, she responded. I think what you saw was her was her pretty much her response. But um, okay, and anyway, we don't need to get. No, it. I didn't. I didn't read it as that. No. She asked because uh, she asked me a question and I replied to her with the answer and I haven't heard back. Yeah, I don't think she had any other comment. I think that was her. But okay, we don't need to get into it. I'll Sorry. have to circle back to her because I'm not clear. So. Yeah, but but anyway, for for the for the group, what what's going to happen is we will have a bottom line number that we have available to grant, and of that number, we can set aside up to a certain amount for local activities. So that's that that'll be the decision, not not the administrative fund question. That's that's a slightly yeah. different. Yeah, and we do have the five thousand that did not get spent on the spring celebration of the arts, um, that's still been held uh, for. Um, 2024 for an event. That'll be part of the bottom line, right? The bottom line number will include funds that are rolling over. I guess I'm not clear what you mean by the bottom line number, but yeah. So those those are are not able to be granted otherwise. They're they're kind of sequestered, those funds. They are sequestered. Okay. Anybody have any questions? Yes. Okay. Um so just for the purpose of our minutes and and the records, uh, when when is my when am I kind of officially starting? I know unofficially any time like that you know, but like is there is there a particular um, time frame you have in mind? So you are officially treasurer as of now. It happened, um, and we will have to work on um, on the transition to 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 collaborate first and foremost, right? And get you up to speed and then transition it over to you as, uh, entirely. But I mean, of course, I'm always still going to be here to you know, support. Okay, great. And just a little comment on what you said about the interest, since they're high right now, it's a shame that we're not getting that income. <laughs> I know, I know. But, you know, it's also not the right thing, you know, that 
the most public benefit comes from the funds actually being out there and being spent on arts and culture. And when exactly our account, that's yeah, then that's not happening. So it was just kind of a, a, a nuanced thing that, you know, when you're looking at it, you're going back through, you're like, oh, well, there's been all this money and, you know, it kept coming, but it simply can't, you know, with a direct granting model. It's just not, not, not to the same extent that it did. So, so it's just, okay, a, we can that's plan helpful. For hmm? Yeah. That, that's just helpful background that you mentioned as yeah. to why, you know, the, the, the available monies will be different going forward. So that's, that's very helpful. Thank you. Okay. Should we get into the actual grants? Yes. Right. So, um, <clears throat> The way we have been doing this is we set a, a time limit for for each grant. We have 103 grants. Um, I think there are three that are duplicate um, where one grantee has applied for two or something like that. So it's maybe more like a hundred. But when you look at that, we're getting into if we were to um, review each for five minutes, then that's 500 minutes. Or if it's, it's six minutes, that's, you know, uh, 10, 10 hours, right? Am I right? Worth of deliberation, right? And we are almost at the uh, half hour into this meeting. So um, I, I think what I'd like to do is, is to start at five minutes per, per grant. And um, so what we'll do is we'll do just kind of a, a quick intro, and then we'll ask if there's anybody who supports fully funding the grant, or if there's anybody who has concerns, um, about meeting the guidelines where they wouldn't want, where we wouldn't be able to fund it at all and start the conversation from that, that point of view. Okay. Matt, do you have anything to add? Uh, No. Okay. Uh, and and last year it was great that Rachel, I guess Rachel, you kind of did the timekeeping. What how many minutes did we do last year? I think it was seven. Yeah, I don't think we're gonna be able to do that. Um we can and seven was was tight at times as well. So um all right. Can are you in a position to be able to do the the time boxing today? Uh, yeah, I'm actually, uh, yeah, I'm, I can, I can, because I'll just stay on this connection. Um, so I will do five minutes. Okay. Do you want me to raise my hand or just say something when the time yeah, comes? Yeah, just cut in, yeah. Okay. It's it's hard to, to actually keep an eye. Okay, great. All Go right. Ahead. Okay. And Matt, you and I didn't talk about this, but I guess we're going to do it just like we did last year. I'm going to just run the intro and keep it moving. Cool. All right. So go ahead and start, Rachel, with the first one, which is um, the Cobham Valley Pro Musica season at the 1794 Meeting House. It's a nonprofit group that is doing this. Um, this is a um, classical music, uh, which is vocal, strings, percussion, and um, it, is highlighting Purcell's uh, work and some other Baroque masterpieces. And um, they are also including songs and celebration from Trinidad, Trinidad, Kenya, and South Africa uh, by an Austrian composer, well, uh, Michael Haydn. And um, this will be presented in Orange, Massachusetts, February 3rd. And then uh, there's also a June, 2024 concert um, being developed to be presented. So they do kind of a winter piece and, and then another one in the summer. Um, they have applied with us previously. Um, the, the performances are open to musicians, um, just, you know, any age, any gender, any ethnicity, they're, they're very open and, and welcoming. Um, and, as far as um, our, our criteria for the guidelines, uh, they they do have the first date. Um, so I think that satisfies our having a date and a location. Now the location is um, going to be in uh, uh, out, outside of Amherst. Um, and, uh, but I, I think it's a pretty well-respected um, 
community and that, you know, there probably are people for that caliber of music that are in Amherst who are, are traveling to either um, see it as the audience or, or also to participate. And um, they are asking 500 out of their $12,500 budget. Um, and they do have, having gone through, um, there's a, a fee to participate. I think it was in the neighborhood about 80 and then there's a ticket sales price of about uh, maybe 15 um, that, that are additional funds that are being used to support this. So from there, I will ask if there's anyone who feels strongly about fully funding um, this or has um, any, any concerns that would prevent them from supporting funding it at all. Is there anyone that, that wants to champion this one? I think for me, this is a strong two. Um, you know, I, I think it'll be a, a strong partial, you know, more than half. Um, I, I think it's a great project, great regional benefit. Um, but obviously, you know, um, it's, it's certainly, it's not an AMR specific item. So I don't think we would be able to justify a, a full funding, but close. So I'd say it's a high part, a high partial. Yeah, I, I appreciate that it's not a huge ask. Um and and for, you know especially considering the the quality of it um yeah oh sorry Cody, you go ahead um yeah i gave it a high to not sure if we are able Cody, you're muted yeah, your audio cut. Yeah, I'm not sure if we're able to do this, but I have a two point six on my end. I again think it's strong, and we're just uh, not in English and they should have both dates set in my aims or that was why yeah. it was not a three. A three, yeah. And this um 1794 um meeting hall meeting space that they have from what I'm recalling is a is a pretty special um location that that they have to to have these events so um I think in this case yes it makes sense that it's not in in Amherst given you know um how they're organized and yet uh the total ask from us this year by the way was one hundred eighty six thousand dollars and we were allocated fifty three thousand eight hundred. So, you know, there, there are definitely some decisions that we will have to make to get from time's up. Yes. Okay. Um, I, I think we're all pretty much on the same page. It's quality work. And yet, um, you know, uh, that, that we'd like to fund it, but we'll have to look at everything. Okay. Okay. So moving to the next, this is, um, uh, artistic messages, wearable expressions of social change. <clears throat> um, it's listed uh, with the date of December third, and um, but and, and then the, but the location is online and pop up events. Uh, they have a three thousand dollar budget. They're asking one thousand five hundred from us, and um, the project is about raising awareness of social social issues by making visually captivating t-shirt designs. They want to collaborate with artists um, that would create impactful designs regarding specific issues and um, make some high quality tees and then market them with social media and use an online platform that's out there and exists now um, both to develop and purchase the shirts and sell them and then they'd like to around this have some community events and workshops and have some dialogue and partnerships with nonprofits to support the initiative. 
And then they want to measure the impact through sales and social media feedback and engagement. Um, is, um, is there anyone who would like to um, champion fully funding this or, or is, does anyone have concerns you want to share? Um, and uh, how because uh, I just don't think it's it's that um bad. I mean, who knows when pop up events will be and where they will be. Or so I just. I have concerns that there's too many unknowns to find this. Yeah, so your concern is that does it even meet our guidelines as far as, yeah, I, so I'm, I'm, I'm seeing Christy nod, does it meet our guidelines? Uh, I, I also questioned if it, if it meets our guidelines appropriately. Is there anyone else who Do wants a, a mic check for Christy real quick? Yeah. Hi, Christy. Hi. Sorry I'm late. Nope. Oh, glad to have you. Just got back. Um I, I mean I agree. My my question was just sort of how how is this different than somebody selling t-shirts, I guess, um, with a message. But let, I'm just pulling up the guidelines to see if, if we can act remember it, and this is for the new members especially, but you know. We ultimately do need to provide denial reasons for for mm -hmm. grants that are outright denied, and that can be tricky sometimes. Um, and so we we tend to list them as just not not meeting adequate public benefit compared to the rest of the grants. That that tends to be our standard denial, which you know is kind of that that allows us to use our discretion, which which MCC supports. It's not like we're just doing that. Um, so if we're going to say something does does not meet our guidelines, it's it's important to definitely you know check it out. Um, and, and have a specific, you know, item in mind. Yes, Christy. I, I just, I don't see a cultural, I mean, I, I don't even think we need to compare it to other ones that do it better. It doesn't, I don't see where the cultural benefit is. I, yeah. I don't see any cultural benefit in in creating t-shirts that have a message on them. And frankly, they don't know at this point what messages they, they you know, that would be around or which causes or it, it just, it's it seems which, very which, conceptual, yeah. but not really something where there's an active um, plan um, or, or even a, a, a tr truly focused um, group that it would benefit. It was very general. So, yeah. But I just don't think we're in the business, you know, we're not in the business of fast fashion. I don't think that's where we're, what we're really trying I, I to get into. I don't think so either, yeah. So at this point, is there is there anyone who feels that there is enough public benefit and, and that it definitely meets our guidelines that wants to fund it? Because otherwise we can just move along. Okay, to the next. Okay, um, the next one is Gallery A3. And they are asking 7,000 for $7,377 out of their $7,377.27 budget. Um, this is for four, um, different programs that they're they're planning throughout the year. Um, there's a month's exhibition um, uh, about a wide range of topics um, at a, and a gallery conversation. There's a juried show um, that's uh, for members of the wider community um, to exhibit A3. And then they're doing a collaboration with Art for the Soul Gallery in Springfield um, and in January that will have uh, these artists um, 
who I believe in this group that they're from Springfield um, actually exhibit here. So kind of, I, I thought that's super nice. Um, and that's going to be curated by Rosemary Tracy Woods and Bill Myers. And uh, then there is also a, uh, a Black Lives Matter Invitational um, with an homage to jazz. Uh, I'm sorry, this is in the past tense. Um, so there's a whole lot of art, sorry to, to kind of just wrap it up. Um, and this is a group that is here in Amherst um, that um, really never shut down during the, the pandemic uh, and, and kept uh, the community in, engaged. Um, so is there anyone who wants to champion uh, this particular grant? I would champion, but I'm keeping my mouth quiet because I'm connected yes. to the person who wrote the grant. Yeah. Is there anyone who, uh, who wants to champion or has concerns? Well, I'll just say, you know, I had a thought because um, A3 and Amherst Cinema were two of our first, mm -hmm. two of the first that came up in the panel book. And, you know, both of them, A3 is a little bit more specific about the use of the funds, but both of them are ultimately sort of, you know, we are one of many different funding streams that they use. And, you know, these are programs that they would run through the year Well, you know, they're going to run these programs regardless. And, and I think it's very important that we continue to support them as, you know, some of the major institutions in town. Um, but I, I think it might be worth thinking about trying to, you know, um, be equitable in the amount that we award to these different institutions, whether they're like by proportion or just by amount. Um, so I certainly, I mean, I don't think we would do a, you know, a $7,000 grant on, on this proposal, but, but I would just be mindful of, you know, other grants that are coming in for sort of overall yeah. operating budgets. I, I would, I mean, I have to agree that, you know, over $7,000 is, you know, an enormous fraction, you know, portion of the 53,000 that we were allocated. And one of the things we do ask grantees to do is to look at the amount that gets awarded, you know, to other grantees from prior years. And um, it's it's a little bit of a struggle for me to see that large of a number and that it's all being asked of us. Now in prior years with A3 being right here in Amherst and it really truly does benefit the town of Amherst tremendously. But I, I guess with a group um, from, I think it was from, from Springfield also participating, Gosh, I would have liked to have seen them apply to 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 another, you know, LCC because those communities are benefiting also. Uh, so I don't see any way we could even begin to fund that that amount. And uh, it is a little challenging that it's it's um, being asked for all from just Amherst. With um, point of point of fact, they did apply. To a ton of other places. Well, it's not listed in in the application. Yes. It, it, did they? Am yeah, I... it says Belcher, Belcher Town, East Hampton, Hadley, Leverett, yeah. Northampton, okay. Springfield, thank you for, Pelham. Yeah, thank you for it's correcting okay. me. Yeah. Which all right then? And there's someone else I'm going to pick on later. <laughs> Sorry. Um, that that said, I think. Um, yeah, I, know I think. Possible. Yeah, go ahead, Rachel. No, I was just going to say partial funding seems reasonable to me as well for the reasons that all of you have already stated. And then I just, um, yeah, it just, it, you know, I'll, like in principle, do we support things like website hosting, you know, and stuff like that? Is that, is that part of what we want to support? Not that, you know, we will question how they're spending the money. Sorry, time is up. Time is up too. But oh, is I there a website hosting aspect of this? Yeah, $642. But. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I guess my my thought was that why wasn't some of the money coming in from some of the other councils that they applied to? Why are we being asked, you know, for the full budget? So I, I think we're all in agreement that it's the the cost has to come down. I I personally can't imagine us being able to come up, come up with more than three thousand, which I think if we look back would be in line with the amounts uh, granted previously, um, or perhaps it was less than that. Um, but it, there, there's a lot of uh, that they're offering. So we'll have to look at it. Anyone else have anything final? I know we're over time. Okay, thank you all. Um, so the next one is um, 
the uh, Amherst Cambodian Exhibit Committee, uh, which will be at uh, with the Amherst Historical Society and um, occurring spring of 2024. Uh, and it's got a history of uh, the um, Kemmer community, please tell me if I'm saying that wrong, uh, opening festival. So uh, there will be performances, including traditional Kemmer dancer, talking and presentations by lo local leaders in the Cambodia community and displays of crafts and handiwork. Uh, the museum will be open during the event uh, to allow for attendees to have a preview of the planned exhibit. Um, and it's going to explore the experience of refugees from Cambodia um, from their journeys from camps in Thailand uh, to their settlement and establishment here in Amherst. Uh, so in addition to the festival and the exhibit, there's an ongoing project collecting and digitizing stories of the community in collaboration uh, with the community and uh, Amherst Historical Society and Amherst Media. Um, so is there anyone who would like to champion this or has any concerns? Yes, Matt. Uh, I think this is probably among the most sort of worthy, meritorious things that we'll see this year. So I would strongly support full funding. I'm I'm right there with you. I mean, dance, diversity, history, culture, um, preserving um, uh, oral tradition stories, it, like <laughs> it's got everything and it's right here in Amherst with it's wow. And a great team. I mean, the, the list of people who are working on it is just fabulous. Fantastic. And it's not a huge ask either. I mean, it's it's really quite, quite reasonable. It it also reflects well on the historical society in terms of, do you know what I mean? There, it's really they're um, branching out to to broaden the scope of what maybe the perception has been that you know what they've been doing more traditionally. So that's that's good to see too. So I think to go along with the whatever the collaborative or the you know multi multi party. Um, Cooperations. That's I think mm. that is yeah. you know can fits that criterion. Yeah, it's fantastic. Okay, so I think we're all in agreement that we would very much like to fully fund this. Great. No other comments. Okay, moving to the next. Um, that only used up half of the five minutes. Well, let's keep going. <laughs> Amherst, um, Amherst Cinema has um, their Juneteenth and $5 family films. Um, so this would be um, at Amherst Cinema, June 2024, and then on 10 Saturdays uh, throughout 2024. They have uh, a $20,000 budget. They're asking us for 3,000 of it. And um, what they will be doing. So they're two different projects and um, they will be doing programming again for Juneteenth. It's part of the town's commem commemoration. Um, and they don't know which film they're doing yet this year, but last year their screening of August Wilson's Fences was nearly sold out. Additionally, they have a $5 family series and it allows families to come in and uh, enjoy the movie theater <clears throat> at an affordable price. Um, and in the past, they've shown Coco, Moana, Frozen, it's a sing-along and more. And there are plenty to do 10 films like this this year. Um, is there anyone, uh, again, this is in Amherst and, and certainly, you know, fully benefits, you know, our, our community. And it's nice that they're, they're making the arts accessible. Um, is there anyone who'd like to champion this or? Um, I will be willing to champion the sink is a great way to include the community in especially if they have those 
dates on our school vacations in the summer, they could have really great numbers. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Any, anyone else? I certainly support doing all that we can for this. Excellent. Any other comments? Hi, Lars. How are you? <laughs> this, this, by the way, for folks who weren't here last year, is is how I ended up running these sessions because Lars was a year younger last year, and Lars needs his time with Daddy, and <laughs> it's a little hard for Matt to juggle. But that's um. All right. So the next um is Julianne, sorry. I yeah. just so for this we're um going to in theory apply the principle that Matt had referenced earlier about equity in terms of what we're giving, you know, vis-a-vis -vis like gallery A3, for example, whether it's in dollar amounts or are are we looking at I sorry, I didn't catch what the consensus was on. on I think that the consensus one. here is a little different. Um, in, in that I think generally we would like to, to fund all of it and it's, it's a much smaller ask whether we will be able to fully fund it. I, I don't know. Um, well, I just want to, I mean, this, this is what I was thinking of, like Rachel said, is, is that, yeah. you know, the cinema is going to do this anyway. They did, they've done probably a, they've done a nice job of really articulating mm -hmm. one of their programs that fits our priorities nicely. But I think, you know, just we did, sorry, we just know that that's part of their, we are part of the overall operating budget, you know, for this program or any program. And they, they do a good job to raise additional funds, certainly, you know, considering it's a $20,000 budget and we're, we're, they're being asked to provide 3000 of it and it's local, you know, so we will see, like I said, we got it. We've got a lot to cut down because we don't have 186,000 by a long stretch to get hand out. Okay. All right. So are we good to move to the next? Rachel, you ready for timing? Yep. Okay, great. So the next one is Amherst Community Theater. And this is uh, to provide theater access tickets uh, for the Amherst Community Theater show Susicle. That will be uh, occurring January of 2024 at Balfour Auditorium over at UMass. They have a $91,000 budget. They are asking uh, the Cultural Council for $1,000, and they're planning that it will benefit <clears throat> about 200 folks. Um, however, they they make a point of saying that um, the the overall audience is something more like 5,000 theater goers. Uh, they'll be offering nine performances over two weeks. So, um, and this specifically um, provides tickets um, for elementary and middle school students and their families whose financial constraints make attending this kind of show prohibitive. Um, and that they have uh, provided free tickets uh, to the Emmer Senior Center uh, Stavros, Big Brother and Big Sister, the Survival Center, and reduced uh, tickets for girls, for the Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, and the United Way. So I think that they're already doing those free tickets, and then this is another bundle of tickets, if I'm reading it correctly. Um, so that is 1,000 they're asking for from the Cultural Council. Is there anyone um, who would like to champion this? or has concerns. Yes, Matt. I just, I think it's, you know, again, uh, worthy of full funding definitely should be, you know, one of our, one of our tops for that. Mm -hmm. I, I, I agree. And, it, you know, you're looking at, they're saying it benefits 200. I think it benefits the 5,200 folks, you know, along with the people who are making the theater, you know, and they do a quality job. Anyone else? And I, it sounds fun, Susical. Sorry. <laughs> um, I was just going to second that. And 
I, I was gonna say fully funded anyway, but what do you what is the number? The two hundred is people they're giving tickets directly to, and what is the five thousand number? So they have nine performances over two weeks and uh, drawing an audience of over 5,000 theater goers. And, you know, they've, uh, they're a pretty longstanding group in, in the community um, who, you know, have been doing this for a long time, know what they're doing. And yeah, they, they do draw a crowd and um, yeah. So. Okay. So yeah, that's just, that's the whole, so we're just supporting them and that's like the total of yeah. people that that makes total sense. And I agree. I would love to fully fund it. Okay. Any other comments? Okay. Great. All right. So the next one is strings of the strong, and this is the Amherst historical society applying for this. Um, this is four chamber concerts in the garden outside the museum, um, that occur on Saturday afternoons, uh, over the summer. And they have, um, a variety of local classical musicians ranging from soloists to quartets to quintets. Um, and they select their pieces and introduce them, providing the historical context of the music. And um, it gives uh, the historical society museum an opportunity to kind of introduce themselves that they're here and connect with the community and probably, you know, do some fundraising for the work that they do as well. And generally last year, the concerts, um, and they're saying 2023, which I don't know, Saturdays in 2023 were pretty wet. <laughs> so, but they had 55 to 105 audience members for each performance. And this is over four performances. And having kind of looked into the budget and the stipends, I mean, it's all all uh, pretty, pretty reasonable. So they have a $3,100 budget and they're asking 2,800. So I will open it up to anyone who would like to champion it or has concerns. Anyone, anyone championing this one? Yes, Matt. It's just a great series. It contributes a lot to the downtown culture, you know, a good venue for a lot of local artists to, to perform. I, I mean, you know, obviously we can't fully fund everything, but this is certainly one that I think is, high merit yeah i think it's a lot of value and it 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 brings the community together you know so much of of um why so many of us joined the cultural council is we we like to see people you know doing things together and uh they, they've got a great track record with this right but in terms of the dollar amounts i don't know if it's reasonable to fully fund this i would say you know one maybe two concerts that's my personal vote okay. and time's up sorry yeah, I think that's something that, you know, we'll have to come come back to because um, we don't have one hundred eighty six thousand dollars. I'll keep saying that. All right. Next one. And, and I don't know about you guys, but I know that there are some coming that, you know, I, I'll, I'll question whether we're going to fund them. But we're on a kind of a roll here. Right. So the next one is uh, the the linguistic heritage. Wait, no, I jumped ahead one. The youth voice through hip hop arts. Uh, that is will be occurring at uh, Amherst High School, and it is Amherst High School that is applying for this, um, and it happens starting in January 24 till June 2024, and um, they are uh, looking for 2,500 from the Amherst Cultural Council, and that is their total budget as well. Um, and they have a hip hop theater program. And I, I don't know if anyone noticed, but in the uh, panel book, there's there's a link to a YouTube video that you can go and review um, and see, see their prior work. And um, what they're working on is, is um, being effective at engaging adolescents with marginalized identities and offering all young people a space to develop their voices and step into positions of leadership. Um, so they have the project 2050 through a class at Amherst High called Hip Hop Arts Ensemble. And the students um, have a wide range of ways to express themselves and they engage in scholarly dis discussion around hip hop. Um, and then they also create performance work about uh, a social issue of their choice. And the guest artist who um, will be receiving uh, the stipend and the stipend that she receives, I think is for 18 
sessions that she'll come in and, and do is uh, Evelyn Makino, and she worked with the Project 2050 founder, uh, Roberto Uno, uh, who's an experienced facilitator. Uh, but I think it's not here in this summary, but one of the points they, they make is it's very important that kids get to learn hip hop from someone who's authentically a member of that community. And, you know, especially for people of color to uh, have role models that look like themselves leading uh, classes like like this. So um, I, I'll i start this off that I think this would be one that'd be very important to, to fully fund uh, if possible, I'll champion it. And Matt, the, um, I don't know if it's this exact group, but Amherst High came to the, um, uh, showcase stage and performed with us and they were phenomenal right this is this is remy's correct mm -hmm. is this remy's application um remy 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 um fernandez yeah yes so so they definitely won a place in my heart with that because they had the entire street dancing at the end it's amazing yeah yeah it was just just fantastic and when i went and really actually looked at um the stipends and, you know, just a, a, a very reasonable and measured use of the funds, it seemed to me. Um, so, again, we don't know to what extent we can do everything, but uh, this is... This is um, yes. I would support for funding you know, to read that they used to have a kind of died and now they want to bring it back is uh, a huge benefit to young people and some in that as it would be a great way to be engaged. Thank you. With the roots. Yes. Any any other comment? I am totally like I think this seems like a great project. Um I just am like one so are we kind of are we funding a class and like is that fine um because it's like a closed off class like i just am always a little bit unclear on some of that stuff I, yeah i want to make a comment on the same lines because we're talking about 18 sessions with one person so i i think this is a wonderful um application it is one that i would be more comfortable i mean i would be more comfortable sort of saying in the high partial to full range than committing to a full funding just because I think that number of sessions is sort of a, you know, an ambitious number, but I, I don't want to be totally, I don't want us to feel like we're locked into that when we come to the end of our process. Yeah. And the, and the, the way it breaks, the way it breaks down in the budget was 139 per session for 18 sessions, which is, is not an unreasonable stipend but at the same time i i don't think a hundred per session you know per session would 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 be you know something that wasn't welcome as well yes cody did you all hear the timer just nope. fyi nope okay anyway I'm done. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, i would love to see them create a production at the end of the 18 sessions. Yeah, I think that I think that's an excellent point. I also wanted to say one other reason that we always ask if it's a public school program, I know we're over time, is that you know obviously school programs likely have additional sources of funding available to them. Just you know, I'm not saying that that that's that's no excuse for us to not fund. We we certainly can fund, but it's just something to bear in mind. Yeah, I would also, you know, give them the benefit of the doubt that there's additional public benefit because they do take this to the performance level to the community. And even though that's not, you know, detailed in here, um, that that's something that they just collaborated with us on. And that's, you know, one of their core intents is to, to do that. So, um, 
but noted about high partial and moving to the next, which is you know, getting all the Amherst things in. Amherst Pelham Regional Schools Multilingual Parent Advisory Council is applying for their Linguistic Heritage Celebration on April 27th, um, and it would be on the town common. Uh, otherwise, if it rains at Fort Rivers um, Gym, it's a $2,220 budget. They're asking us for $1,620 of um and this is to celebrate Linguistic Heritage Month um, and with a great quantity of languages spoken in Amherst and the surrounding area. And uh, they're delighted to be making this an annual event and to reinforce community awareness of the presence uh, and importance of linguistic diversity. The event includes music, dance, spoken word performances in a variety of languages and language-centered workshops, games, and activities. Uh, and there's also food and drink from different cultures and that they will in incorporate creative work and presentations by students and staff. Um, and they're seeking funds basically for stipends for their performance, workshop leaders and staff members uh, and for publicity materials. And they continue to uh, hold the event at the town common um, so that you know certainly it's accessible to the community. Uh, to be clear, the food and refreshment piece, um, they they understand that, you know, that's not something that we can fund and having gone through the budget, that's, you know, not um, at all ent entangled. The amount that they're asking for would be completely separate and uh, would meet our guidelines that way. So is there anyone who would like to speak to this one? Who is the band? Do we know? Have they identified the performer? Um, I thought it was quite quite a, a large group of people, and this is where it would be yeah. really great if the PDF was bookmarked. Um, so that we there's, there's a list. I'm sorry, there is a list. We will invite participants from dance school artists. Okay, so I Bamba de the Aqui Band is in the budget, so that's a stipend. So they want a twelve hundred dollar. Uh, Okay. where they budgeted $1,200 for a stipend specifically for that band. Then there's 300 for supplies and materials for creative activities and decorations. And then they need 120 for the Amherst students to run sound and technology. And then there's another $100 in stipends for six uh, performers and activity leaders. So that brings us up to 2,220 of which they're asking 1,620 from the Cultural Council. I know, Lars. Numbers, numbers, numbers. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, it's nice to see that they're turning this into an annual event. Um, does anyone object to fully funding it if we had all the money in the world? Excellent. Are we good to move on then? Okay. Rachel, I'm moving on. The uh, next is um, the applicant is Ancestral Bridges Foundation. And this is for reclaiming our narrative, Blacks and Indigenous uh, in America since 1776. It's an interdisciplinary project. Um, and it's uh, listed as um, June 18th, 2024. And it will be uh, downtown at Black Historic, downtown Amherst at Black Historic Sites. They have a budget of $17,760 and they're requesting uh, the entire $17,760 from the Cultural Council. Um, so they are looking at 2026 will be the 250th anniversary of the founding of America and the Declaration of Independence and the Genocides of Indigenous People and Legalization and Propagation of Slavery. And national celebrations will take place. And um, however they feel Black and Indigenous folks nationwide, instead of celebrating, will be reclaiming their narrative and that telling their story, which Frederick Douglass started uh, with, what is the 4th of July to a slave? Um, and locally, the Ancestral Bridges Foundation will conduct interviews with living elders, document their stories, share photographs and narratives, and uh, tell what uh, in the Amherst, uh, what in Amherst the 4th of July means to Blacks and Indigenous people. And um, 
They want to document the histories uh, that have been appropriated at best or erased at worst. And there would be a curated exhibit of photographs and artifacts and telling the history that will inspire descendants um, uh, of today's uh, biopic uh, folks alike, prideful, ambitious, and curious. Um, wow, it's uh, quite am am ambitious. Um, anyone uh, want to champion this or does anyone have um, any concerns? So, I, uh, so I just would love if they were to list a few of who they were in because that they could interview people from anywhere so that will this be a Based initiative. So, I I mean I I love this project and it's the first time that they're trying to do such an ambitious archival um, component to it. I certainly think that we need to we should we should fund it some somewhere. However, they've kind of shot the moon in terms of their ask. And it's not a very specific list of who's going to do the work and, and exactly how is it going to work out. So, you know, I think we have to recognize that, you know, the Ancestral Bridges Juneteenth event is one of the highlights of the year in Amherst and, and find a way to celebrate it. However, this particular angle of, of sort of the archival and documentation of it, I think, um, you know, to get, I mean, this is it's just a very large sum of money and, and without more detail in terms of who's going to do the work and how I wouldn't be comfortable giving the full grant or, or even really a high partial. Yeah. I, I share the concerns that there really wasn't documentation. Um, and, and again, I go back to, we do ask grantees to please, please take a look at, you know, the typical grant award amounts, and and we let them know that we often give partial grants, and um, un unfortunately, you know, this is such a large portion of of you know our allocation. It, it's hard to kind of yes, Rachel, go ahead. Thanks. Um, so, just a couple of clarifying question. One is that on the um, uh, page six of their application, um, they say that. This event costs over fifteen thousand dollars. This MCC grant. So I'm. I guess they are thinking that by applying to Amherst Cultural Council is the same as applying to the Mass Cultural Council because that's actually another layer of funding source for this type of endeavor, right? Because Mass Cultural Council has another type of grant that. So I was just don't know if they are clear on those two different um possibilities that's my my one first question the other thing is the in-kind support because if they have a whole bunch of partners um listed then you know whether it's amherst college or sorry time is up but i was just wondering if they are able to provide provide in-kind support in terms of helping to defray the costs for you know um duplicating images, archival records, and all of that, because that's not clear in the application either. So those are just the two questions I would have for them. Thanks. Yeah, I'd say there's a lot that's not clear in the application, starting with when they say the Juneteenth event costs over 15,000. I don't know how that's related to this event, because this isn't a... This is. This is to document the Ancestral Bridges established Juneteenth event. I get, but which Juneteenth event costs? I don't know. I, I think we're at time, and and we definitely don't have seventeen, eighteen thousand dollars to give to any single event. So, um, we'll have to revisit. Very, very amazing work, though. It, it's uh, okay. Uh, Antenna Cloud Farm. Uh, their music festival and retreat. Um, 
that occurs um, starting now in November through um, October of uh, 2024. And it is at the Antenna Cloud uh, Farm and, um, and also in various spaces throughout Franklin County and their home base venue in Gill. So um, after their 2023 season, which they said was pivotal and impactful, um, they will foster community wellness, accessibility, and diversity through a musical presentation and events. So um, they have most of their audience is coming from Franklin and Hampshire counties comes out to them and they're expanding their operational team and producing a third season of educational program programming through the Experimental Institute and is curating its seventh season of world-class concerts uh, at their home venue. And they will produce a um, the third uh, Antenna Cloud Farm Music Walk, which is a free day-long multi-space event in Turner's Falls to connect local community with residents, artists, and partner with organizations doing impactful work in the realms of social, racial, and climate justice. So um, I think, did I say they have a uh, almost $50,000 budget and they're asking for $250 from the Amherst Cultural Council. And um, I'll open this up saying that although it is not in Amherst, I um, would support fully funding it. Um, the, the, the community truly does go out there. And, um, so I think there's $250 worth of benefit to our community at a, at a baseline is, is anyone else? I think Matt, you might've actually attended. I don't know if you're yeah, I, uh, sorry. I just want to say that it, this is one of the reasons I, I joined the cultural council is to discover things like this. All of the, all of their programming is fabulous. Anyone else have any other comments or would feel strongly about not fully funding the, the $250 to this group? I think it looks great. Um, I was confused because I say it's like a retreat. Is it like an ongoing retreat? Because there was no specific date. Like, is it just kind of you can go and do the programming there? I, I, I don't know the specifics. I think one of the things with everything they're mentioning is maybe, you know, because they can only apply for one grant annually. They're mentioning everything. Sure. Okay. I don't know. Anyone have any more to add to that? Okay. All right. I am noting that uh, it's 646 and we are capping these at an hour and a half. So uh, we're going to power through on, on a few more here. Um, but uh, we will be doing a, a hard stop here at seven. So let's see how many... More we can get to. Okay, the next is the Arcadia Players. It's their 34th season. They're musicians. They have uh, a $66,000 budget and they're asking uh, $2,500 from the Cultural Council. Um, in the interest of time, I'm not going to read all of the wonderful uh, pieces that they will be performing. The performances um, occur at the South Church in Amherst, and, and then there are um, others that are happening in Hadley, another in South Hadley, another in Northampton for all five performances. Um, and uh, I will open this Sorry, that wasn't much of an intro, but they're a fantastic organization. Again, 34 years. I mean, uh, there's some reason that they they uh, keep coming together to perform and have audiences. So is there anyone who would like to champion fully funding this or has any concerns? Okay, I would I would say that you know I I think we'll probably end up at a partial with this as far as when we balance things out for all of the classical music and the classical music that's happening right here in Amherst, like the strings at the strong, and there will be more classical music as we go through. Uh, but certainly, this is something that is providing public benefit to the the people of the Amherst and and the larger community. But as to whether or not we we can. You know, two thousand five hundred is 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 a pretty big um, amount given 
you know, that we only were allocated 53,800 BMR. Um, I will support a portion. Just seeing that only one performance is in town. <laughs> From where I read it, bro. Yeah. Yeah. And I and there is just one performance here in town, and yet I do fully believe that people from Amherst travel to the other locations and enjoy those performances. Um you know, there, there's also if we were to get into the budget, then, you know, we might be looking at the costs um, to attend and ticket prices and how all of that's offset. Um, and, you know, it's definitely something we'd, we'd like to continue uh, supporting. But, you know, I think a, a, a partial funding is is uh, something that is what we will have to do. Any other comments? Okay, so um, the next uh, is actually we're going to review two at once from George Baker. He has, he can only, uh, we can only fund one of these uh, two events. There's a Dixieland Stomp concert and an LBG band concert. Um, at the moment, uh, it doesn't have, neither of them have a date or a location. Um, so uh, there, I don't know, I, if everyone's kind of read the the summaries, I guess one of the things that rather kind of stands Ooh. out to, to me, hello, what was that noise? I'm hearing things. One of the things that stood out just kind of going top line between um, the two events is uh, the event, which you, they're asking $400 for, would um, possibly have 2,500 audience members versus the more expensive event at 700 would only have 100 projected audience members. Um, so is, from my perspective, um, while at other times, you know, depending, you know, considering someone could have applied for both in the same grant, we might've gone and looked at the more the, the higher dollar value. I just don't see the value when there are significantly fewer people that would even attend according to this. And, and we still have the problem here as far as um, dates and locations. I, yes, I have concerns about this. I mean, obviously this is not the um, most polished grant we have. I will just say that the reason that I, I think we do, I would advocate for some funding for it is the um, benefit to the senior center. You know, I, I feel like he's, you know, he wrote this and he wrote it to several different cultural councils. So he has like TBD at the senior center. Well, there's only one senior center. So I, I think, you know, I think that's pretty clear. He's proposing to do it here. However, there's no letter of support from the senior center. But, you know, I we know that they're going to, I mean, they, they always embrace any kind of cultural event. So, you, you know, I, I certainly agree. I mean, I wish there was a date. I wish it was a little bit more clear that, he had already reached out to the senior center and gotten it set up at the same time. This is one that I might be comfortable going back and getting some clarification from the, from the applica applicant on just because public benefit of doing things at the senior center is so strong. Okay. I want to check the number of audience members again, though, because the senior center can't hold 2,500 people to the best of my knowledge. Maybe, maybe there's a number in here that's, yeah, I always I always take that with a grain of salt, whatever number they put in there. It, I mean the, the data is incorrect as far as the actual application says 100 for each of these events. So I don't know where that 2,500 came from. But it's all just I mean it's all kind of speculative anyway. So okay. So the that the point that I'm making is is null. Um so I I I agree. I don't see how how we could, you know, I think we would need to ask for some sort of letter of support and a date to be sure that it's a sure thing. Other than that, I, I don't have a, a problem with potentially fully funding. Yes, Rachel. Um, just a question about procedure. Mm -hmm. Since, you know, where you're thinking that it would be worthwhile asking for clarification or more documentation. Is this something we're prepared to do each time this there's 
lack of clarity or is this supposed to be something they would have supported uh submitted as part of the application i guess well, it's just i have a question about just the process so you know the that leaves us where you know i i guess we could end up just going back and say we're not supporting anything because they don't have a date and a location and yet having read back some through some of the guidelines with with the mcc in general you know it's it's our function to support um and promote the arts here and um you know it's it's one thing if if you have something that's really not meeting any criteria at all um but if if that's the only concern then um I, mean, I think it's reasonable that we would at least say can can you come up with that matt what are your okay thoughts? that's cool and then i suppose given this particular applicant then will we also take that opportunity to say which one of these would you prioritize since he's got two applications? Yeah, I think we've done that in the past. Yeah. Yeah, and it's also, Freddie. Sorry, you cut out. We also have discretion, um, you know, on on some of, some of, I mean, I think some of that is, is you know, we, we ask somebody if we if we want to fund something at the senior center, we can ask them and, and they can, you know, go get that letter of support. Um, it's also something in our guidelines where we say you can't apply for more than one. It's a local guideline. And every year I feel like we, we come to this and we don't really, it's not a, it's not a mandatory guideline. It's something that we have locally. And, you know, we've made people choose in the past, but I think there's also an argument for, for letting them combine too. So I, I would, I would be very cautious about, yeah. Not within our right now within our current lo local guidelines though that's the issue it's it's one thing to have someone combine at at this level um i think you know where it's a single performer or, or something at a low cost but it, it could just get really hairy um if we let people combine in in general especially with some of the larger organizations that come to us i would not open the door to that thanks uh, time's up too thanks Okay. And, and uh, time's up. I, we don't really have time to get into another though. And um, I, I think the other thing that I'm seeing there is sometimes it, it almost looks like two applications were put in because they just couldn't choose. And considering that they're both at the same venue and both, you know, for pretty much the same community, um, you know, um, it, it seems okay considering that we don't have $186,000 to give to everyone that, you know, someone's going to have to choose. But I think it's it's fair to ask for that venue and uh, date and then also to ask, you know, which one would they choose? Which one would the just, would senior center choose? <laughs> you know, that it, it would... just, I mean, our, our local guidelines say only one application from each group or individual will be considered. Please combine multi-program project requests into one application. You could, I mean, you could argue that this is a, a, scri a Scrivener's error, you know, to, to, because different different councils treat it differently. We've heard that before that some councils actually don't want you to combine things into multiple. They want you to do, you know, one per. Well, let's not argue tonight. <laughs> I I don't think we have eleven hundred dollars for this grantee period, so I think it works out to some extent just fine that uh, we can go back and better understand uh, one if they have a date uh, and a letter of support. Um, for that date and which one everybody wants more between the musicians and the host. Okay, so uh, our last agenda items, I don't believe there was any uh, business that we hadn't anticipated uh, 48 hours in advance. And I'm not hearing from anybody about that. So I believe we can adjourn. All right. Good, when, good night. When, when is our next meeting? It's a good question. It's scheduled, isn't it? I think I sent well, the I, list. I, does anybody know off the top? I, have to, I actually have to look it up. I meant to look it up earlier today because. Um, yeah. yeah, well, and there's a list that, that went out, but it's Tuesday the 4th. No, sorry. It is um, it, It's uh, not next week. <laughs> uh, no, I sent it. I sent it to you, Christy, specifically. Um, um, I think we have one on November the second, which is a week from today. According, is that correct? 
That's correct. Same time. Yeah. yeah. 530 so, to 7 yeah, a week yeah. from today. Yep. And then the next one is the 7th and then the 9th and the 16th. Four, okay, great. Thank you. Thank you so much. So as you can see, we'll need to, you know, keep to time boxing these so we move through and get through all of them. So thank you all. If you have any questions, reach out to me or Matt. And again, thank you, Eleanor, for uh, stepping up as secretary and very excited to have you, Rachel, as treasurer. Congratulations to you both. Have a great night. Thank you so much. Um, I put the minutes in the folder. And so if someone looks at those and thinks they're too or not enough detailed, let me know. But there so. are, they should be the minutes. Great. Take care. Bye. Bye.